Hello, so time for another poorly drawn whiteboard video explaining Fallout. So, what this one aims to do, and this is something you can see sort of illustrated in Protect and Survive type manuals, is why some rooms in a house or a building offer better protection from Fallout than others. And it's to do basically with the distance between where Fallout dust might land, giving off gamma rays, and basically how far the room is into the house or how much is between you and the outside wall. So let me try and explain. So what I've done there is the stuff on that house, which looks kind of like hair, I guess, is meant to be fallout dust. And the lines coming off of it are meant to be gamma rays, just basically explaining how they just shoot through everything. Now, obviously, the further you are into the house, so let's say you are in this room here in the middle. So the upstairs middle room, for example, or by that sort of front door middle room, assuming that, you know, there's stuff in front of the house. So fallout can't land like exactly there and shoot through the wall. Um, they would be the safest rooms in the sense of, you know, it's the biggest distance from the outside walls where the fallout would land to, um, you know, where it, where you were sheltering. So therefore you'd be receiving the least dose. Now, what you could actually see there is, let's say a house had a basement. If you had a basement around your house, then you'd actually be safest in the basement. Because obviously you'd be furthest from the roof where fallout dust might land. Um, and then, you know, shoot its gamma rays into you. And what was advised in a lot of old training manuals was to build stuff around this sort of bottom area of the basements. So basically the dust is even further away. That's the reason you'll see with a lot of bunkers that with a bunker structure there's also like earth, um, you know, earth mounds on top of it. The reason being that that earth puts a bit more distance between you and the sort of roof of the bunker. In terms of range of the, you know, gamma rays coming off of the um, fission products from the fallout. So obviously different buildings offer different levels of protection. Now the problem is of course that if you're in a small bungalow or a caravan or something like that you're not going to have very much protection at all because you're always going to be near the outside wall or the roof meaning that there's very little distance between you and fallout dust. Now they generally call it protection factors as in say if you had a basement that you'd put earth around and everything you might get a protection factor of between 10 to 1 and 100 to 1 meaning that, you know, the fallout dust is 100 times less, for example, on 100 to 1, uh, the dose you'd receive from the outside. So if it was 100 Rontgen outside, it'd be 1 Rontgen inside the basement, or, you know, whichever measurement you want to use, you know, say, 1 millisiever inside to 100 millisieverts outside, that kind of, you know, numbering. Um, now, obviously... This is what the idea of an inner refuge comes from in sort of the fallout protection manuals, is that if you've got a room in your house that's furthest away from everywhere else, and you put as much shielding material between you and the outside, then obviously you're going to have the best possible odds. However, you know, it's going to completely depend on what sort of fission products land on your house. You know, if, if there's holes in the roof, for example, then a lot of the fallout products are going to get closer to you anyway. Now again, this is just a theoretical thing, because let's hope that nobody ever has to be exposed to... Um, fallout dust in such a way to want to put stuff like this to use. As I said, there's lots of quite good manuals from the Cold War that explain about shelters and sort of the different levels of protection they offer. Now, obviously, if you had a second layer of the basement there, let's say there was another layer of basement there, you'd be even safer because there'd be even more distance between, you know, where the fallout dust lands and yourself. Um, that's the reason, obviously, proper nuclear bunkers have generally protection factors of like a thousand to one or greater than a thousand to one, depending on how big they are. Because obviously the further they are underground, um, the dust isn't going to get anywhere near as down. Assuming that there's proper filtration units on the vents, so the fallout dust can't get into the vents and get into the um, bunker system that way. Or the shelter. The idea basically is that, you know, obviously, if you're a few stores, stories down, and especially if there's some s permanent structures above you, there's going to be quite a distance between you and the fallout dust to the point where it's not actually going to be dangerous, at least in that regard. And the more time that goes on, the weaker the fallout gets in terms of the half-life of the radioactive products in it. Now, you know, it is important to know, obviously, that stuff like this for fallout protection is only protecting you from the fallout. Um, if there was a nuclear blast, a house like this would be completely demolished, which I think is something people don't always know, know the difference between. That, obviously, if you're in the explosive yield or blast radius of um, a big, you know, fission bomb or fusion bomb, um, you're going to be pretty much wiped out regardless because, you know, you don't have to worry about fallout at those ranges. You're going to be incinerated or pulverized by flying debris. 
Um, the fallout is more as if you are downwind of where nuclear weapons have gone off, especially a ground burst or, say, a nuclear accident. So maybe for an example like this, you'd, we could say there was a fire at a power plant like Chernobyl, you know, that kind of idea. So there's fallout essentially being created by a burning reactor that's exposed to the air as opposed to, you know, a nuclear bomb going off. That way, if you can think about it that way, it makes more sense why you'd have a fallout sheltering process if you weren't being evacuated as opposed to, um, you know, your house is just instantly flattened and you inside it. Um, now, obviously, if you have a Geiger counter or similar dose meter type things, depending on obviously which ones you use, you can measure what dose you're receiving and which areas of the house have the highest or lowest dose after fallout lands. But in most of these old training tutorials, they assume that most people wouldn't have access to that sort of gear. So the idea was always that you basically based your inner refuge on the furthest distance from the outside walls. And the more materials you could put between you and the outside, the better, because that means there's more of a chance that a gamma ray interacts with that piece of, you know, furniture or whatever, bag of soil rather than you. Anyway, that's this video. Hopefully it made some sense. As said, there are manuals that explain this in a lot more scientific detail, but I think quite often people can't be bothered to read those. So there you go. That's how basically fallout refuge ideas work during the Cold War. The more distance you put between you and the fallout, the better.